Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today Duff Dog and I are going to see if we can't get a 1967 Rambler SST back on the road. That's right, this thing's been off the road since 1981. Off the road for 40 years. We picked this thing up, and uh, I don't know much about Ramblers. I don't have much for parts for Ramblers, but let's see if we can't get her back on the road. So there's a few things that caught my eye in this yard. There's a 3031 Model A coupe over there that uh, grandson inherited, square body Chevy. 55 Ford with a 302, International Scout. Pontiac Aster station wagon. So it's like the Pontiac version of the Nova and a Ford Pinto coupe, hatchback, sedan, whatever they call it, not a station wagon. Everything's pretty much spoken for, except for this 1967 Rambler Rebel SST and those two cars, the Pinto and the Aster. So if you want me to pick up a Pontiac Aster, you could try real hard. I don't know if I will. It's got a four cylinder manual, kind of cool looking car but it's missing some pieces. So the SST is the highest trim package they offered on these Ramblers, and they only came in two-door hardtops. This thing was originally white, 290 V8, automatic, black vinyl top, black interior. Oh boy, she's, uh, she's pretty baked out. She's got the posturepedic seat insert. My foot go through the floor. Oh, real good. Whew, she's hot in there. She's got cruise command. So we could push that. Oh, well, we're gonna have to work on that. Got some WD-40 from the 80s. Every car out here had a new set of spark plugs. Or, uh, well, probably not new. Oh, those might have been new. We put them back in the case. But everything out here had a set of plugs. Oh, and a rotor and a cap. I'm guessing all that stuff was replaced on this car. And then those are the used ones. What else we got in here? Oh, she even had seat belts. High class. Kind of a split bench type deal. Kind of like a 40 20 40. Column shift. How many miles? 24,000. Ah, must have been 124. I don't know. Let's roll that window down. She's a little ripe in there. But I mean, rockers are good. Glass is all in it. It ain't all rusty in the roof from the vinyl top. You can see the lead there where they see in the quarter to the roof. It's got a lot of tar and lichens on it. But yeah, a little bit of rust there. I think she's got a whiskey dent in there. Can't really tell. I think it does, must. Pretty straight. Are the keys in it? Uh, apparently they don't have the trunk key because they had to Jimmy rig that open. <coughs> as soon as we got here, he had to find some deer poop to roll in, didn't you, Stinky? Oh, keys are in it. We're golden. What else is this? Compression tester. That's not a good sign. Look at the radio. Vertical. It's kind of a neat thing. How neat is that? Windshields. Fubard. It's got the stainless wipers though. Tires up. Oh, that's right. These got the stupid press on brake hub axle conglomerate thingies. Hopefully there's some good stuff in the trunk, like a spare tire. Yeah, this car is even better. Starting right down there. A little crease down this side. Anybody got a door handle for a 67 Rambler? We're gonna need one of them. Dog legs in the quarter, oh, couple holes. I don't think we brought enough air to pump these up. You could get these things with disc brakes too. I think the biggest engine you could get was a 343. They offered some six cylinders, the 290 V8 and the 343. I guess this thing actually run pretty good when they run it last. But, you know, that was only 40 years ago. It must be our cruise control stuff. 
I think 67 was the first year of the mandatory dual reservoir master cylinder. What do they call that thing? Oh, ruined it. Rambler colostomy bag, inline block heater. But yeah, air cleaner's there, distributor's there. Does she turn? Oh, belt slipping. Oh yeah. Hopefully we don't have any stuck valves. If we had a stuck valve, I wouldn't be able to turn that by hand. Oh man, you'd think it has to have more compression than that. That might not be good. I hope that compression tester box wasn't a sign of things to come. I guess an LS would drop right in there. What's this? Does it have electronic ignition? Maybe. Alternators down there, no power steering, no power brakes. Duff, get away from that Aster before you fall in love with it. Go see if this has got disc brakes. Well, it kind of feels like there's a caliper protector, whatever you call it, thinger. So I don't know. Maybe it does have disc brakes. As much as I'd love to throw a battery in this thing and pump up the tires and get it running here and drive it 20 miles home, I think we're just going to put it on the trailer, take advantage of the shop. She's uh, pretty uh, soggy out right now. It's definitely gold bond season, and it's early. We might as well take advantage of that shop before we lose it. So. Go over there and hook that chain up. There's nothing to hook onto on this dang thing. Unibody stuff. Yeah, it's swampy out. Well, that didn't go so bad. You were no help while you were busy rolling in some kind of poop. I forgot these sweet scallops these things got. This super long valve stem is leaking, so that wouldn't hold air long enough to get it loaded. You could see uh, just how long this thing was sitting here. She was in there quite a ways. Big hole there in the middle. Uh, it looks like the rear main seal is leaking pretty bad too. I think that whole tranny was sitting in the dirt. You can see where the cross member in the oil pan was. And lots of poops. Single exhaust. I'm guessing it's going to need a muffler. We'll take that with us because you always want to leave the yard cleaner than when you were there. Even though we're getting the old rebel out of here. All right. Load up. Stinky, you're riding in the back. Well, made it home, didn't we? Didn't even lose a tire on the trailer this time. I think this thing will wash up pretty good. A couple little holes in the rocker. And fender. But, yeah. Minus the vinyl top, which I'm glad it's gone and didn't cause too much damage. So, not bad. Have to put a tire on it. Do some interior work. All four headlights even. Tesla charging station ready. Oh, there's a little whiskey dent in that front fender. That ain't bad. It's pretty straight. This fender's 
No rot, no rot in the rocker either. I think they were galvanized. I'm not a Rambler guy, but I'm pretty excited. Hopefully it's got compression. Oh, is that mirror gone? Son of a biscuit. You can't find those either. Antennae is there. We're gonna be, we're gonna be jamming to the AM radio. Let's uh, throw this in the scrap pile. Guess we need a muffler too. Probably some tires. The wheels all rolled though. Can't complain about that. So if there's anything I hate more than crickets chirping, it's flat tires and wheels that don't roll. So we're gonna fix that. This one held air for like a day. That one holds air for about as long as uh, Britney Spears and that first dancer guy that she was married to lasted. So I'm gonna pop these off. Hopefully we can just whammy some tubes in them. I think so, since how they hold air for a little while. Should be good to go. And uh, we'll find out if she's got disc brakes. Any bets? I think it does. Here we go. Ah, drums. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I'm no Rambler AMC expert, but here's these are uh, unibody cars. Uh, four link. Oh, I think that's a Dana 44. Coil springs. And a lot of grass. I'm guessing the muffler was the integral link to this exhaust that was laying on the ground when we brought her to town. And yeah, there's that goofy pressed on axle hub. With the ginormous nut coming out the middle. I know there's, I think the internationals had those. I know the early Fords did. I'm not really sure if a GM did or not, but it turns. So let's get it to hold air. So these wheels are kind of mismatched. That's an outside trim ring, tub cap thing my bobber and this looks like an internal one I don't know it's external I lied anyway this is a 14 learned that when I was mounting it up and uh well you can't read it since I pumped it up but that's upside down here let me flip this for you that right there of course it's in the cracks it says blemished you don't freaking say oh I guess the bead just seated on that one I'm guessing the others are matching to that and are 15s. I don't know, the 60s were kind of a 14 inch heyday, weren't they? That looks like a 14. What say you, Duff? 14? 14. What a freaking hodgepodge. Let me guess, 15? Uh. Uh. 14. So you want 15 up there. So this thing's meant to bank right. Well, if we get this thing running, we'll have to. Address the wheel scenario. I don't know about the white letter, white line out on a quote unquote muscle car. So, so we're that much closer. It rolls and it steers. And we know that it's got drum brakes and a hodgepodge of wheels and tires. Right, duffel up, I guess. I'm half tempted to just wash this thing before we even started, see how excited we can get about it. What do you think? Hmm? Yeah. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, Duff's not excited to wash it either. You guys don't want to see that. Let's see if we can't get her wheeling over. Duff uh, handed me a screwdriver and said open that trunk up, so let's see what we got inside. Any bodies? Is there a floor pan? <clears throat> Those hinges are a bit sticky. No bodies. But the floor pan is all there, and in surprisingly solid shape. 
looks like we got all four of the factory hubcaps, a rusty trowel. I wonder if that's some trim off the seats. Battery hold down. Looks like it's off the radiator off a tractor. Duff, you want me to comb you with that thing? After your bath that you really need? Drugs? Oh, better. 22 shells. There's like a dozen of them in there. That's got to be worth at least 40 bucks. Oh, hopefully that's not the door handle for the passenger side. Lots of busted stuff in there. Trucker bomb, heater hose, leather dog collar for you, Duff. Knickknack handle. AM FM Ford radio. That must be old horse tack. What's this guy here? We got a boom box, crank her up to 11. Sound design. Oh yeah, those were the good ones, I'm sure. No uh, multi-carb intake manifolds. Ooh, a sign? Oh, here's hoping for a porcelain sign or something. Doesn't even have the jack back here. Should we see if we can get that passenger door open? Reach through this stinky mess. Oh, sure enough, it's this door handle that's broken. And that one's broken too. What the French duff. It's probably why they quit driving it, because you had to roll down the window to get out. And that side, I don't know what we're gonna do. Clamp a locking pliers on that shaft. Anybody's got any uh, 67 Rambler door handles? Hit us up. We could use a set. Anything good in there? Hoover Schneef duff? Open the hood. Got it. Man, you're getting good at that. It's like a freaking jungle under here. So, I guess we'll uh, grab a battery. Slide in there. See if it seems like we got any compression. Oh, that cable. Not good. I'm guessing that's the power. Oh, yeah. There's the... Uh, Starter solenoid. Where's the ground? Sure, great big one for that. What's this caution all about? Oh, negative terminal is ground. When servicing or changing battery, correct polarity must be maintained to prevent damage to alternator. Don't hook them up backwards, Duff. Looks like we got SpongeBob, so. Nancy is our battery sponsor this week. Oh, positive is going to reach. Oh man, that cable is bad. Real bad. Not the negative. We're going to cheat a little bit. Get on there. Well, it's sparking at us, so that's a plus. All right. Well, since the crank's over, sounds like it's got compression or a really weak starter, which we don't have a spare on. I'm gonna rip down some of this stuff and see if we uh, can get some spark. Here we go. I'm gonna get some gloves because I'm guessing there's some poopy in there. Maybe a entire nest. Yeah. Oh, she's got a holly. Big two barrel. Well, there's the toilet plunger chain for the cruise control. I'm guessing there's a, oh yeah. This used to be the diaphragm for the cruise. And she uh, died. <laughs> That's Holy a knee slapper. Cruise, not gonna work. Quite an elaborate throttle system and it seems like it's not really returning really well, but at least the carburetor's free. 
You have a uh, screwdriver, pop this distributor cap off. See if we got points. See if we got spark. Well, I guess we could just crank it over, see if we got spark. Let's do that before we open it up. So I got the loser switch hooked up so I can see if we got spark underneath here. I'm just gonna pull the coil wire. Put the key on. So we should have power at the coil. Watch out for that fan. Nothing. Imagine that. Ooh, those contacts are pretty green inside that distributor. Clean that up if we get spark. Use the old handsy points file. Somebody said a dime works in a pinch. I guess uh, I never carry change, so we'll never know the answer to that. So we got the key on. We're just assuming that we got power going to the coil. But if we don't have spark here, then maybe we'll check that. Alright, try number two. We got sparkage. I'm going to clean these contacts off inside the distributor you can see they're a uh, little green in there that's what happens when brass oxidizes oh it's made in usa though sweet so i'm gonna scratch those off a bit before i put it back on there maybe we'll clean up the contact on the end of the rotor too So before we turn it over a bunch and suck a bunch of bad fuel out of the tank, I'm going to nip the fuel line going into the fuel pump just to make sure we don't suck up any 30 some year old gas. We got a pan under there, so don't you worry, Greta. How dare you! If anything comes out, we're catching it. Oh, by golly. It was wet for a second, so there's some fuel in there. I'm sure it's real good stuff. That is putrid. So our key's on. We got spark. I think we got compression. We're gonna give her a tickle of the old hot sauce. Get some lights off. Oh man, heater hose got gnawed off. Great. Hopefully some of that went down the breather and into the bowl. Here we go. Slingshot engaged. Slingshot engaged. Hoofta. A lot of debris flying around there. Easy on that starter. We've got a good streak going. We haven't had to tear any apart. Yowza. We're on a hot sauce, so I gotta top that off. But I think we'll hook up a boat tank. Because I'm guessing, seeing as how there was fuel up to the fuel pump, that fuel pump must be pumping. So let's hook up a boat tank. So that way we're pulling some good fuel up there. Try to be as gentle on the starter as we can. Anything we can do to help the scenario out. Maybe we'll spray some lube on that carburetor so we're not doing this a bunch of times. Yeah. We're going to need a heater hose before we drive it, if we get to that point. Before we get too wild, Jimmy, check the dipstick. <laughs> Looks like it's brand new. Yeah, nice gold color to it. What's the change rate for the part? You can see we're getting fuel up to the carburetor. She's uh, getting a little moist. Moist. 
Don't tell that to the good folks of Moist Jaw, Saskatchewan. Or the good folks of Mira Moisty, New Brunswick, where they love shucking moisters. Don't forget about Moist Fist, Tennessee. The Moist Mississippi's a great river. You ever been to Moisty Gras? No, but I've been to the Rocky Moiston Range in the United States of Amoistica. I will fight you. That's just the way you want it. Give her some hot sauce, see if she lights off. Good news is the starter didn't bang that time. Oh, that linkage is not smooth. Give me a little choke action. Oh, it like that. She's got some blow by. A lot of blow by. Oh, new record. Why does they running? God dang, the old uh, Rambler Rebel SST here runs pretty freaking good. They've got like some of the most over engineered throttle linkages ever. And that's kind of binding up a little bit. So I'm gonna have to lube that up some to get this thing to return to idle. I want to idle kind of high unless you press on it. Some of that might be in the carburetor itself here, but yeah, it freaking idle. We gotta get some water in it before we run it too much longer. In order to do that, we're gonna probably have to put a hose on that heater core up there. Let's check some brakes as well. And we gotta just blow all this crap off because this is just a fire waiting to happen. All this grass and debris underneath the hoods and a pretty big exhaust leak. Oh man. Look at all the rust that come out of that exhaust. Looks like we got a pretty good oil leak coming back there too. I don't know if that's a rear main or what. Yeah. 
bad, not bad at all. Little flexi hoses. Let's see if we can't tidy a few things up. I did jump inside and it's got an oil light and that was off as was the charging light. So must be charging and oil pressuring. She definitely needs some exhaust. I think it stops about right here. Brought it off way more than a muffler. Smoked up the shop pretty good. So we had to open the door. Duff's over there waiting in the Dodge ready to go for a ride and get some more junk. All right, let's keep picking away at her. Oh, so I did notice it had quite a bit of blow by when you're cranking it over, but as soon as it started running, the blow by kind of went away. So the old rings fixed themselves, maybe. I guess we should try it. See if the fuel pump on here is working. We had the electric one go on, so that should have been pumping it up there as well. And we'll have to see if it starts with the key. Should. Because, I mean, the key's still running the ignition power, and it was cranking over with the key, but. Never know. One eternity later. Well, Duff, what do you say we get back on this thing? Oh man, can you guys see that? We haven't worked on this thing in so long that there is a ginormous cobweb on the old 243. Is that what this thing is? 290. Way off. So, let's uh, see if there's any brake fluid in it. Stop fluid, no go fluid. I'm glad they went away from having silly hardware. Oh yeah, just snap off, farkin' eh? See, that's why you just go to having a bail clip that holds these on. We knew it's empty any oh man. Oh that's uh that's no bueno. Oh my word, I've never seen anything so chewy inside of a master cylinder. I don't know that there's any hope for this thing. Goodness gracious! This is like what John Candy's arteries must look like. Would you just let me, give me, let me get the, let me get. I don't even know what we do with that. I mean, do we take a chisel, knock all that stuff out? I know what we do is you just go on Rock Auto and just order a new master cylinder, because I'm guessing it's 30 freaking dollars, but. Uh, since we're about to lose the shop, I spent my last dollar getting Duff a bone to chew on. How's that bone? You're not even gonna acknowledge the good people of YouTube? I don't I don't know that we can afford a master cylinder. So I guess we're gonna have to just chisel the stuff out of there and take some compressed air and hope it comes to life. But you know we can't afford free beer. Thanks, uh Marshall Badkey. Yeah, that's Iowa Classic Car Ryan's right hand man to you guys. He's the, I think he's the one that wears the uh, gym shorts all the time. He doesn't wear khakis like Ryan. Ryan's the the gang leader, you know, with his khakis on. You know, they're not as cool as Dickies. But what do we got here? Hawker. I don't even know. That guy looks pretty cool though. Hawker himself. Let's give her a whirl. I've had worse. It's brewed in Germany. Does that mean it's imported? Tomato, tomato. It's it's no ham sandwich. If you guys haven't, reach out to your uh, local politicians, representative people, and tell them to have Molson Coors bring back ham special light. What a bunch of BS. I'm pretty sure they got at least one and a half emails last time I mentioned it from you guys, so keep up the good work. Yeah, that's what Duff thinks of this stuff and lack of sandwiches. Sobering Horsepower Division is our koozie sponsor this week. Well, I wonder if we hit the pedal, what's gonna happen? 
Hopefully it'll just be rock hard and we can just abandon ship on brakes. Oh man, that door is sticky. That is a big brake pedal. Stiff as a brick. Oh my word. I've never seen one that's stuck before. I, I don't think there's any coming back from that one. Farkin' A. I mean, I guess we could drive it without any brakes, because you know we've done that before. This thing's got a really nice headline. It's like one molded piece. How neat is that? That's pretty neat. It's got like the ribs built right in. Oh, for neat. The mice can't, I mean, the mice are probably in it, but they can't get out. That's pretty cool. Oh, it did have one little hole there. You put some tape over it. This thing's good. I mean, the brakes aren't good. Uh, I guess we're gonna forget about brakes for now. Or maybe look for a master cylinder. Maybe we can pull that one apart. No. Didn't we try that on the Inner Smashional? Trying to get the piston out of there and it did not go well. I guess we'll wait another eternity for a master cylinder. You can see if it'll hold water though. Plug that heater core off or loop it or put a new hose on it, I guess. What is this? The wing window, the latches are usually back here. Look at the front on these things. I go in. Huh. Freaking AMC, everything's backwards. Because that thing snaps off. Would be my luck. Really wanted to try that cruise control out, but we know that thing's all janked up. A side note, I got a growler, and not the beer kind. It's for uh, testing generators and such. It's made by Niehoff. It's a Model T12 growler. You guys uh, let me know if you want to see, show you how to use that thing. About uh, pretty much all the inventory from uh, the local Ford garage, as Grandpa called it. It's been defunct for quite some while, but we did get a bunch of stuff. This is a small glimpse at what we got. Right, Duff? We loaded up the whole back of the old 66 Chevy. All right, let's uh, put a heater hose on this thing and see if we can not fill the radiator up with stuff. What do you say? All right, here we go. What do we need? Cutoff wheel. Oh, my cripes for... I guess the good news is, if we got that spider, maybe he's eating the crickets. Because Duff is clearly not doing his part. Might have been my fault, but <laughs> it's rebel. Things have things have escalated quickly. This thing doesn't like me. We'll just put that back and like it never happened. You're fine. Much like the master cylinder, it appears that heater hoses chock full of goodness. I'm sure that's not throughout the rest of the cooling system, so no need to uh, check any of that. Are you kidding me? Are those hydraulic lines for the uh, transmission cooler? Maybe some cowboy replaced those, but usually they just use fuel line. Those are like crimped hydraulic lines. You AMC experts, let me know, did they not use solid steel line from the transmission all the way to the radiator like everybody else did? They put some rubber crimped lines in there? I'm not gonna be able to look on Rock Auto and tell you that because I don't think you can order transmission cooler lines for uh, 67 Rebel SST on there. Duff concurs. So I guess we'll go find some 
heater hose. What size is that? Five eighths? Stick on there. And then uh, throw some H2O down the hole. Don't like that plan or what? You know what I like? Sandwiches. Hackers. Yeah! Your local hack mechanic. Hacker. Not sobering. Those guys aren't hacks. They know what they're doing. Just ask them. Alright, heater hose time. Oh, you're three quarter? That seems too big. Way too big. We'll just put some spit on it. That's what Grandpa would say. I have no idea what that means. Anyway, we're gonna use some spray away because it's got that uh, pretty lady on there. And it's not petroleum based. So, you know, I mean, I would be impressed because we're saving the environment. Just go on there. The difference between 5 eighths and 3 quarter. We need an 11 16 hose. Would AMC do something so stupid? I tell you what. Is it on this end at least? Of course it does. It's so close. Just go over. Oh, just the tip. Yeah. Get on. Very nice. It's nice. All right. What did that last one look like? It didn't look kinked, I can tell you that. So we'll just leave it alone. We can always shorten it up, right? Measure once, cut twice. New hose clamps. That's right. Oh, never mind. They're not made in America. Oh. New hose, we're into this thing pretty deep now. That ain't terrible. I don't know if we should put straight water in it because it's essentially free. Well, I mean, we haven't been paying our bill, so there's that. But if it does have coolant in it, I don't want to mix that up because, you know, we already got a good start there and coolant's expensive because we don't have just coolant on tap and a bill we can't pay. So. I wonder if we could just open the petcock, what a fun word to say, and uh, see what this thing's got in it. Well, where is that at, Duff? Go sniff out the petcock. Hack mechanic. These guys don't know what they got into. They're going to probably sell tens of cans of beer this month because of me. Also, does anybody know what SSD stands for? Super slow transportation, semi-sonic transmission, super slippery transaxle. I don't know. I'm sure it stands for something really sweet. Super sweet transportation. That's what it is. That's what it is, super sweet transportation? I found the pet cock, Duff. No thanks to you. Yeah. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Uh, uh. Well, something's coming out. Hey, it's green. Let's put that back in quick. Woohoo! Woohoo! It's got coolant in it, so at least the block didn't freeze. Apparently, the freeze plug or the petcock didn't do what it's supposed. To. Are you kidding me? This thing has a sediment bowl. Well, it's not a glass one, but it's clearly a sediment bowl in 1967. Which, I kind of dig those sediment bowl filters. What do you guys think of sediment bowls? I mean, they're effective. Right? I think so. At least you know what you're getting into. And they're cheap. Coolant. It's almost as bad as brake fluid when you get it on your hands. I suppose we'll have to tap into the coolant stash and dump in there, huh, Duff? That's coming out of your college fund. Just wait. How old are you? Yeah, you're beyond college age. You can't go to college anymore. All right, coolant time. 
Is it running on the floor yet, Duff? I don't see nothing coming off the bottom. Well, we're a gallon and a half in of uh, AC Delco coolant. I hope they find that acceptable. Well, a gallon of AC Delco and a half gallon of water. It'll be fine. I can reach it with my finger, so. I'm sure there's not an air pocket where that heater hose was. I can hear it being angry, but I don't see any leaks. Oh, just kidding. She went down quite a bit. We better grab another one. Well, that's almost two and a half gallons, and I can't imagine this thing holds more than three and a half, four. So, just keep an eye on it. That's like $25 worth of coolant. I suppose we should figure out where to put our fuel cell at, or maybe we should stick the schlong the tailpipe of this thing and see if the uh, fuel tanks may be salvageable where's the gas door even at on this thing right here be a locking gas cap oh whew, it ain't what's it look like in there well we ain't gonna see much with that filler neck I think just to be safe we should uh, just go with old reliable boat tank. What do you think, Duffelopagus? Yeah, boat tank? All right, you talk me into it. I'm sure that thing's fine after sitting for 40 years. So where are we gonna put the boat tank on this thing? Gasser style up front. Is there room under the hood here? Almost. Maybe we can get rid of that block heater thing or where does that even tie into where do you go oh into the side of the block awesome how I don't I don't get it you got it teed off at the water pump here comes over here goes into this goes into the block gold valve covers are cool though squirrel squirrel thinking uh, since the floors are so good in this thing we should probably just uh, hang that fuel cell up front. What do you think, Duff? No, don't, don't worry about the door handle. You don't need a door handle anyway. You don't have thumbs to push it. You're right. Yep, you like the pull style door handles. You got those figured out. Push buttons, not so much. Yeah, freaking thumbs. I think we could hang something out front here. No? Yeah. So I think we'll get a fuel tank mounted up. I guess maybe we'll look at that master cylinder. I don't think we're gonna get it to come apart though, man. Like, air pressure is not gonna push that thing apart. And I'm guessing we can get them for fairly reasonable. All luck though, just for you. So after a quick gander, it looks like a master cylinder is 40 bucks. So for 40 bucks, I'm not even gonna mess with that thing. Nor would this guy. Hacker himself. So, you know, that's gonna take five or 19 days via horse ride to Podunk to get here. So, I mean, we're not gonna have brakes on this test drive, let's be honest. But I am gonna order one, because this car deserves it, I feel like. And we're gonna hang the uh, um, 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 um. fuel tank up here. Probably on this side, closer to the fuel pump situation. So, here we go.
I changed my mind on the uh, fuel cellage, don't forget to remind me to fill that thing up, because don't be a wank, fill your tank. Put it on this side so that the wires will reach up to the battery, just in case the uh, sediment bowl AMC fuel pump isn't doing the old suck and blow like it should. And look at that, nice hose loopage and tying up, I mean, really ties it all together, don't you think? You're not impressed? Anywho, uh, hopefully we don't drag that fuel pump down the road again. Look at that, I even clamped around the license plate bolt. Those see all gumballs, they're not gonna notice because we're blocking the ear. I mean, those plates look really close to the current plates around here, don't they, Duff? Good morning. Would you mind stepping down from there with your license and registration? Sure, I was just kind of... Would you mind stepping down from there with your license and registration? Yeah, no problem. But yeah, it's, I mean, it looks, it's good. It's it's gonna stay there, right? Yeah, it'll stay. Check it out, though. I mean, that thing's that thing's not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. Yeah, that's on. Okay, maybe I don't really like that, but whatever. We're still gonna run it. We got a master cylinder on order. Probably not gonna be here. I kind of want to address this battery cable scenario because thing's really light. She's really shredded, and it's really short. Oh, you know I won't? Yeah, you know, you're probably right. But I mean, it's still got coolant in it. Yep, right to where it needs to be. Good enough for the girls I go with. So yeah, I mean, I think put some fuel in there and pump her up. Maybe check the uh, Jenner fluid. How do we even check that? Where, where is the transfusion dipstick, Jimmy? Oh, she's way down here. Way down here in the bottom. Ah, uh, bone dry. What kind of stampings are on here? L, that's low, full, full, pint, automatic. Well, thank you, Captain Obvious. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Check oil with engine idling. So maybe it'll come up, but I think, uh, I think we're gonna have to put some more Jenner fluid in this thing. Get this. What is with all these vines growing on this? And really, do they need to put the whole sine wave on this thing? What's going on there? Freaking AMC things. Yeah, like I'm gonna be able to get that back in there through all that stuff down there. Just slide in. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've had enough of this thing for tonight. We're gonna get a uh, master cylinder on order and get some gasoline. Top off the Jenner fluid. Yeah, we'll get your window to roll down because I know your door doesn't open. You're welcome. Super slushy transmission. That's what SSD stands for. Okay, see you guys in uh, a couple seconds. We're back. Had an Tiffany last night. Oh. Didn't we, Duffers? <coughs> we did. I wonder if like a Ford or a GM master cylinder will work or <coughs> whatever I got on the shelf. <coughs> yeah. So we're gonna pop this one off and maybe get some dimensions off of it and uh, see if we can <coughs> graft whatever I got on the shelf. I got a couple options. Yeah, okay. It was your idea. Whatever. Settle down. Such an angry dog day. I didn't see anything. So now they use a line wrench. They got our two lines off. They got our two mounting bracket holes, bolts, whatever. A firewall out of there. Uh, apparently the rod is attached to the pedal. Some of them are, some of them the rod isn't attached to the master. So, we gotta take this little bolt right there out. I noticed while I was under here, uh, oh there's the dimmer switch. Hidden over there for you millennials that don't know that. That's a dimmer switch. Look at this cute little dimmer switch. 
your wa windshield washer squirter was uh, basically just a diaphragm in the car and a cute little pedal. How neat is that? How neat is that? What's not neat is uh, laying in this stinky carpet, trying to get this bolt out, hanging upside down. Should be fun. So I've seen some uh, pretty nasty master cylinders in my day, but I think this one's going to take the cake. Oh. That's a lot of debris. And there's just a huge amount of buildup in there. Oh, for cripe's sake. They got the uh, brake pressure switch. Built right on to the master cylinder. So I've seen them coming out the front, but never out the bottom. Good news is uh, Fivel just happened to chew off the wires, so no need for brake lights. Here's the bolt that I was talking about through that eyelet. And of course, you know, the bolt fell out inside the car after I was sliding it out, so hopefully we can find that. Usually there's kind of a one time use clipper dealio that holds these rods in there usually the new ones either come with a rod that's not in there or you gotta snag this one out of there and the new one comes with a clip maybe we can get that out of there because I'm well let's take some measurements see if I got anything on the shelf that will slide in here hold on hold that thought Well, no such luck. I got this master cylinder that uh, comes with a rod. It's got a little bit different style clip. But the brake lines come out the left side as opposed to the right side. And we're not going to make a bunch of new brake lines for this. We'll just get the right one coming if need be. And then we'd have to do some fabric cobbling here. I did take that snap ring out. And you can actually slide this one out, but this is that clip that I usually end up mangling because I'm too angry to do it the right way. And then we got this Corvette style master cylinder. This actually has uh, fittings on both sides, but the problem with this one is it doesn't have a clip that just uh, to hold the rod in, so our rod would just be kind of hanging out there. I don't want to go through all the work of mounting this up and bleeding it to find out that the brake pedal can just fall out of there and then you got no brakes. So we're probably going to be waiting for a new one because uh, I don't think we're going to be able to get this thing apart. And even if we did, I don't think it would uh, end very well. So that sucks. We're going to lose the shop waiting on parts for sure. Well, I guess we'll put these back on the shelf. So your uh, tech tip of the day, this is your master cylinder bore, this diameter. And like the one, that Corvette style is an inch and an eighth. So each pedal stroke, you're gonna move quite a bit more fluid because you got an eighth inch bigger diameter. Well, this one's a one inch. So you wanna size those accordingly. And sometimes they got built in, um, what is it, proportioning valve? for having uh, disc brakes and drum brakes or built-in bias. That's what it is, bias, I think. So you gotta make sure you get the right master cylinder because this thing's drum on drum and I think the one inch that I got is for drum brakes, but that inch and an eighth is gonna be for uh, disc brakes. And usually the, what is it, the, the bigger diameter, they push harder or vice versa. That's kind of how you get your pedal feel is by the diameter of that. I'm not sure what the numbers are. I think you want a bigger diameter with a booster, smaller diameter, non-boosted. It doesn't make sense to me, but to you guys it might, so pay attention to that. If you ever put something together and it doesn't have the right pedal feel, like it's too soft, try going with a smaller bore diameter 
of the uh, master cylinder. They make a socket for these, but I don't have one. Nor have I ever really seen one in person, I don't think. I don't know why they couldn't just put a standard hex on there. I suppose they didn't want people taking them out. Dummy mechanics like me, maybe. Good thing we got pipe wrenches. Well, I mean, it's pipe thread, so might as well use pipe wrenches. Oh yeah, like that switch is any good. Bunch of crap in there, too. Imagine that. I'm thinking we should uh, probably just order a brake switch, too, while we're at it. You had to go through all that work and not have brake lights, even if those wires aren't hooked up. And since we're ordering parts, it uh, looks like there's discs, 9-inch drums, and 10-inch drums. So I think we'll pull a front wheel off and measure the drums so we know which parts we got to order because you know you couldn't just have one brake option or two disc and drum we gotta have heavy duty drum and standard duty drum so I'm gonna go pull that wheel off and measure up some drums so we got our wheel off and you can't really measure these very well with a uh, <laughs> you're a lot of help I know tape measure because you get this hub braid in the middle dust cap and such so helpful so helpful but a cool tool of the week you can get these on amazon it's uh for measuring brake drums it's usually for measuring the inside but if we can measure the outside and this comes up to be about 10 and a half inches so you figure if there's a quarter inch of meat on either side here that is a 10 inch brake otherwise cheese it would have to be uh what three quarters of an inch thick if it was a nine inch brake so there's no way that she is a nine inch brake or no way that this thing is what is that three quarters of an inch thick on either side because that would be one girthy sob but yeah i figured i'd show you this cool tool i got it a while back i actually got it for measuring uh, the inside of rims in case you want to like knock out the center of that and put it into a 16 inch rim or something like that but what you do with these is you can adjust your brakes and set them up and then measure the outside and then measure the inside of your drum so you can get them adjusted up beforehand or if you're going to turn some drums you can measure the inside of your drums and see if there's enough meat left to turn them yeah pretty nifty little tool i don't know it's like 20 30 bucks something like that pretty handy sorry i'm not giving you any attention okay i just had to show the good folks on the lube tube the uh, sweet tool of the week here and I figured since I'm ordering brake parts I'm just gonna order wheel cylinders and hoses and all that stuff because you know sometimes we do things right around here and since I got so many brake options I didn't want to spend a bunch of money on parts that weren't gonna be right it really sucks that we gotta wait but such is life we get some brake parts coming maybe even a carb kit probably not but I was thinking we could fit a lot more tire out back see if I got some meats that we can slide on this thing and maybe we'll wheel it outside and clean her up a bit too in the meanwhile because no point in having it sitting here for a week until we can get parts because we're in podunk and we can't just run uptown and you know go to your local napa and get a wheel cylinder or a master cylinder or brake hoses or any of that fun stuff because we ain't got one. And even if you did have one, I'm guessing they wouldn't have a master cylinder. They could maybe have it the next day. We're gonna get it for Rock Auto, cause they're cheap. And if the parts are wrong, it's my fault. Not Napatons. Um, 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 um. Should we go look for some wheels? So I'm always picking up wheels, different styles, different widths, stuff like that. And uh, cause they really change the look of a car. So I found a 15 by eight here with a 275 60 15 on it. It's a multi-lug pattern. These things are awesome. I usually try to snag these up at swap meets and stuff. I'm not really a fan of red, but that's what I got. Let's see if that clears. If not, I think I got like a 255 60 as well. Let's see if this fits on this son of a biscuit. Better? Plenty 
clearance out here. Seems good on the inside. Oh man, just totally changes the look of that car up. You could either paint that drum up in the lug nuts or get some new lug nuts. Or you put some dog dish center caps under there. I think it's some dog dishes, it looks sweet. Just all kinds of room for, you could fit a hellacious tire in this thing. Plenty of clearance on the frame rail, suspension, nothing's gonna hit. That's what's great about these 60s and 70s cars, you can fit so much tire, you know, in the 50s, 40s. Can't get a lot of tire underneath them things. This thing just begging for it. Now if we could get like a 235 up front. Go see what we can scrape up. Yeah, way good. Well, the tire's a little bit low, but really changed the look of this thing up. Uh, not a big fan of the chromes on the front, but I couldn't find anything in a four and a half inch bolt pattern that was any better than what was on here other than this. And they're 14s, I really hate 14s. I mean, I like staggered wheel sizes, but 14s ain't gonna do it. Looks like we're gonna have to get a SpongeBob on huh, Nancy. But uh looks better than the you old know, rusty white rims with uh the white wall on them. And this thing was she's angry. She's about ready to let loose. Should put some air in that thing though. The other thing that irritates me, when guys put the wheel weights on the outside of the rims, even on your late model vehicle, don't do that. Look at these cute little valve stems this guy put on there. So big obnoxious valve stems, those really grind my gears as well. So those cute little nubby ones, freaking mint. Yeah, if that was black and we had like a 235 or 225, 60 up here, a little bit more tire than this 205, 70, this thing would be sitting good. Wheels and tires and stance, you can make about anything look good. Let's uh, see if we can get this door open so that we can escape if we need to, and then also uh, to get all that crap out of there. So how are we gonna do that? Can we just uh, push on something? Oh yeah, just need a screw em driver. Or a uh, previous extension work. Maybe, other end. Oh, two hands. Maybe not. Your old ladies just gonna have really long coke nails. Get the door open. Sweet. Thinking they uh, didn't have her shut all the way. All this stuff grew up in here. Well, now we can get the window down. How can we get this to work from the inside? Looks like we gotta take this uh, armrest off. Son of a biscuit. This is we could put a locking pliers on there. And that must be where the seat trim come from in the trunk oh yeah she's busted somebody got a little wild getting into the back seat at one time let's see what we can do to address that make it so it's paw friendly so duff can just pat her down and escape if need be reassessing the situation uh there's no visible hardware cutting edge stuff amc so since we can't get the armrest off I just put the old locking pliers on there. Should be good enough. We'll roll Duff's windows down and he can bail over the side if he needs to uh, escape. Oh shoot, it looks like this uh, seat trim is busted on this side too. Terrible design AMC, along with your mirrors and your door handles. I guess I could uh, clean this thing out. But that doesn't sound like any fun. Should wash it off a bit, but it's getting it's getting that time of day where I don't really feel like doing any washings. Maybe I'll have a sandwich. Think about it. So we can't roll this thing outside without killing ourselves without brakes. Oh, Duff is here to push. What are the odds this thing rolls? Oh, not bad. Oh, now you show up to help. Uh, 
Oh man, that thing looks good. Kind of reminds the old NASCAR days, don't it, Duff? All right, let's get the pressure washer. Just got off the phone with Puddin. He said he was having withdrawals. He hadn't pressure washed anything for like three days. Poor guy. Hope he's doing okay. gas in that thing. Don't be a wank. Fill your pressure washer tank. She's getting kind of dark, but this thing looks way good. I was trying to think of what to do with the top, because I'm guessing you can't get a new vinyl top. And from experience, I know that it's hard to find somebody to install a vinyl top. So I'm guessing strip that off and gray primer, red oxide primer, flat black, paint it white, try to blend it in. I don't know, maybe like a flat black would be kind of cool. At least strip that stuff off there and something all raggedy Ann and eh, run it that way. This thing cleaned up pretty good. I did notice she's got a pretty good whiskey dent over here where she's been. I could see it down there, but with all the scuzz on it, you couldn't tell. But she's been pounded out. Oh well. Not bad for a car that's, what, 54 years old? Give you the old Summer's Eve douche in the uh, door jams and on the door panels. A uh, quick shout out to our sponsor this evening, Summer's Eve Feminine Hygiene Products. <laughs> when something's gone wrong and it's the smell of your thong. <laughs> Summer's Eve. And uh, got some honeycombs that come out of there. That was a lot of bees or wasps or something in there at one time. Glad they didn't come out to greet us. Yeah. Oh, we should put this thing in park. She don't uh, roll away on us. There we go. Yeah, we'll uh, leave her sit outside overnight. Dry out. This thing looks freaking good though. Those big tires back there. I need to scrounge up some other steelies for the front. What do you think about like a gold rough and gold steelies? Kind of like Freiburger's got on his... Uh, Disgusting. This thing reminds me of the Disgusting because she's pretty disgusting. Yeah, maybe just gold wheels. Looks sweet. Get her down a little bit more in the front. Kind of digging it. Really wish we had some brake parts. But, what do you do? Time to drink some sandwiches. I wonder where Duff went. Out chasing tail or bunnies. Who knows? Man, do I love pressure washing. So jealous of pudding. Oh, yeah. Those other channels that do it on a regular basis. Man, that was satisfying. All right, let's give you something worthwhile like sandwiches. Duff, it's National Dog Day. Should we celebrate? <laughs> Got the zoomies all wound up. 
Oh yeah, do them donuts. I'm gonna get this thing running so we can do some donuts, huh? Oh man, you're wild, man. No donuts tonight. We're cracking into the Yinglings. America's oldest brewery. Took the old hacksaw and uh, cut the tailpipe off because when Chin helped me roll it in here, we uh, backed over that. So, kind of looks like it was due for uh, being replaced. Anywho, and then we took the schlong and we did some, some scope boring. There's our uh, filler neck. And you can see that white crap we're knocking down. It's not Hoover Schneef. And then we're starting to get into the tank. And, uh, come on, focus now. Enhance. 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 There's the bottom of the tank. It really doesn't look that bad. I think she's just been empty long enough. That uh, everything kind of dried up. So I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a uh, six gallon jug of gas in there put a new chunk of hose up front and put a filter up there. Put one of those cheapy clear ones so we can see kind of what's going on. And I think this tank will be fine. Also looked on Rock Auto. Well, I'm guessing this tank is like unobtainium anyway, so we might as well try running it. Uh, worst case scenario, we just got to take it to a welding shop. Worst case scenario, we dump gas and it runs right out the bottom. But the bottom of the tank didn't look bad. I was looking at that when I uh, was cutting these guys off. I did notice uh, it's missing a strap. She's got a couple of whiskey dents in it, but you know, hot rod rebel like this, that's to be expected. So we might have to fabric cobble up a strap. I mean, if we're gonna get real serious about life, but yeah, I think let's, let's dump some petrol in it and uh, see what happens. Like I said, we'll throw a filter and a new chunk of rubber up front. Should be okay. This schlong, she's really uh, earning her keep around here. His keep? I don't know. Good unit. Yeah, that stuff will be fine. Filter will catch that. Not like that carb doesn't need a kit anyhow. Throw a little uh, stabilizer in there. A little sea foam. Good to go. Man, it looked better when it was wet, but it still looks pretty freaking good. I wonder if you should try buffing this thing out. You can get carpet for like 150 bucks on Rock Auto. And I think you can get this like rear valance for like 70 bucks, which I don't really care about that. You could literally cut a chunk of black cardboard out, put back there. But carpet, big deal. Seat cover is a little bit harder to come by. So put about six gallons of petrol in that sucker. Blew some air in there. I did blow some air in there before we started and got the old stuff out. There was a little bit in the line, surprisingly. But I, uh, we're not getting any uh, fuel in my clear Wix part number 33011 fuel filter. Oh, and the vacuum port for the uh, cruise control. Plug that off because the hose had come loose and she's pretty rough shape. And we know that the cruise ain't gonna work. So just to alleviate any future issues, plug that off. We can't get fuel up here, so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna give her a tickle of hot sauce, see if we can't get it to pump some fuel up there. Otherwise, we're gonna have to keep blowing air back there. I don't wanna do that, because compressed air in those little plastic fuel filters, they don't mix well, they go bang. Don't ask me how I know. So you guys keep an eye on that filter. Let's we'll see if we can't get it to start. Hopefully it didn't drink too much water yesterday when I was pressure washing under the hood. It's pulling fuel, but I don't want to stay running. Oh. Well, we're interrupted by professional golfers here, so we're going to take a break. Look at this hot. What year is this gem? 
built with pride noon in georgia it's about an 83 model pretty close she's a sweet ride the old sun classic four speed we got rid of uh jack nichols jack nicholson jack is he the golfer i don't know Well, the whole time Arnold Palmer was here, we left the key on. So hopefully we burned the points out or the coil or something. So let's see if we got spark now. Perfect. Sure enough, lost spark. I'm guessing our points didn't like that. So probably clean those things up again. But I've had about enough fun for today so I think we're just gonna hang her up if we could figure out that fuel issue check the transfusion we'll probably take this thing for a rip maybe it'll come back to life give her the old Morsky flick <laughs> There we go. I don't know what I did. Turn the screw, adjusted it. Well, that would be a shame if I lost that screwdriver. That was a snap on this little biscuit. Oh, there it is. Found it. Good to go. Now is this thing gonna fire off? Transfusion works. Well, the wheel's turning. That's uh, that's good enough for me. Ford Flatheads. You guys want to see another one of those? That one's stuck. Of course, it's stuck. Everything we get is stuck. But speaking of stuck. The gas pedal, she's uh, she's real sticky, so we should address that as well. Bugs are getting bad. We uh, fogged them out pretty good. Let's uh, unhook our battery, call her night. Oh man, yeah, we need to put some battery cables. This one's too short, and uh, this one's too small, and it's shot. But yeah, she runs pretty good. Need to fix that throttle linkage, and. I guess uh, battery cables, brakes, maybe, debatable. I did get a hold of the AMC guy, Dino. He said these 290s are pretty good little engines. He likes the 343s, but these are kind of like a small block Chevy or like the Pontiacs, where they've used basically the same block for everything. So you could drop a 343, 390, 401, 
same bell housing, same engine mounts, pretty much everything he says drops right in. He says they do make some hop-up parts for these things. Well, intake manifolds. I think he said you got to have pre-1970 intakes bolt on. 70 and later will work, but you got to do a little modification. So they make valve covers and headers and stuff like that. He did say fuel tanks are unobtainium, so hopefully that one cleans up. He said you can spend a whole bunch of money on interior. He said quarter panel, stuff like that, completely obsolete. But he said there's an AMC forum out there. He says all kinds of good help on there. And uh, yeah, super nice guy. Knows a lot of stuff about AMCs. Mostly an AMX guy though. So we're not quite at his level. All right, I've had about enough fun this thing for tonight so see you guys in a couple minutes another day later well since we don't have any brakes we don't want our throttle sticking you just don't want your throttle sticking anyway but got our throttle linkage unhooked i think we did this before i don't remember much but you can see it's not the linkage it's in the carbonator so let's see if we can't get that freed up a little Keith Benoit Croil. Is this stuff flammable? Contains petroleum distillates. So, should burn. It'll suck her through. Oh man, that is sticky. Well, she should be good and flooded now, at least. Speaking of flooded, I think it's starting to rain again. That Croil. That is good stuff. Look at that. Real nice. Our throttle linkage up. Good to go. Check that one off the list. See if we can't uh, resolve our battery cable scenario because those things are bad. This one's nice and heavy, but it's too short to go where it needs to. And it's also, well that one's the right color, that one's the wrong color. And that thing's just freaking wasted. Let's get a battery in here so we can figure out what we need for length on that one. And we'll see if we can address this scenario. I suppose we always could change this side to be the ground and then just put a longer positive in there, but I like to have a shorter positive because if the positive rubs through, Bad things happen where if a ground rubs through, you're not gonna have any arcing. You get my point? Yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about. Always have a shorter positive than you need. Looks like we need, what's this? What a 25 inch power cable. And about the same for a ground. I think I found what we needed in the back. We just need to swap more. The hole ain't quite big enough. I'm gonna go get my reamer and uh, hog that out. If you don't know what a reamer is, look it up. They're way better than a drill bit. I had a buddy who was uh, trying to ream one of these out with a drill bit and it wrapped around his hand. Buggering it up pretty good. Reamers don't grab quite as bad, and when you get done, you got a round hole. You ever notice when you drill a hole with a drill bit, it's got three sides on it? Yeah, invest in some reamers. Look at that nice round hole. Compliments of my Norseman reamer. These things are good. Anybody who wants to be a fabric cobbler should have some. This battery cable could be about an inch longer, but she'll be okay. She's sticky out, Duff, huh? Cripes. Now that we got the battery cable situation addressed, I don't really like this uh, block heater thing going on over here. It's just that hose wants to rub on the steering and on the frame, and this one wants to rub on the distributor and water pump. And this hose just looks bad. So if we could just eliminate all that and this T. And just run a new one up to there. The only hose left would be this one, and I think that one's formed. So if I just put my regular hose on there, it would probably kink. 
Also, I looked up radiator hose for this thing. Rock Auto has formed lowers, but they only offer a flexi hose upper. And of course this one's scarily close to the fan. And it's also probably the original with these hourglass style clamps. So be strong little radiator hose. I think I'm gonna jack this thing up and go underneath and see what we gotta do to uh, I don't know, I'm guessing that's going into a frost plug. We might just not address it because I don't want to mess with frost plugs. Right meow. But I just, I like new hoses because, you know, you blow a heater hose or radiator hose. Your day is over, is it not, Duff? Yeah. So, take a look, see what that is. Maybe it's just, I'm hoping it's just a fitting that screws into the block and we can spin the nipple out, put a plug in there and carry on. I don't know why they put that thing over there and they just didn't put it in line up there. It should have circulated it through the block and the heater course. Then your car would be warm and your block, whatever. Cabin compartment inside the car would be warm too. That's what I meant. You know what I meant. They know what I meant. All right, jack her up, Duff. Don't look at me like that. You know what I meant. Since we got it up in the air, let's take a look at the bottom side of this thing. She's got a couple whammies on the core support up here in the bumper bracket. Must have went over a few approaches. Yeah! There's our fuel filter. We haven't run a ton of gas through it, but there's a couple big chunks in there. But just a little bit of rust. Not bad. Here's those, I don't know, formed, well, not formed, but crimped transmission cooler lines. We can see they've been cut off and then spliced in at some time. So I'm guessing the factory ones ran steel to here and then spliced onto that maybe. Of course, it's rubbing on the uh, sway bar right now. You don't want that. Everything else looks pretty good. It's kind of like a Mustang suspension where it's got two control arms. It's got this trailing arm that of course the bushings are shot on. And then it's got the spring sitting on top with the spring pockets kind of built into the uh, subframe inner fender or whatever oh look at our block heater setup's got square nuts on it classy farmer things floors are super solid i think that rear end is a dana 20 dean the uh amc expert said there is a ring around the plug that says something I would be cool if it was like a posi. Sometimes they have notes around the plug, around the diff that say to use uh, differential, limited slip differential fluid. Be sweet if she was a posi. Yeah, everything looks good, except for that exhaust. That is not good. She shot. I do have an appointment with Boom Tube Brian. See if we can't get some duels on this son of a gun. You can see why the transfusion was uh, probably low. She looks a little soggy. Oh, what's this? Well, apparently the uh, vacuum modulator rubber hosey gave up the ghost. Somebody probably got a vacuum leak because of that too. I think when these are not hooked up, they'll only sh they won't hit third gear. I don't know. We should put a new hose on that. They address that situation. And what are you for? Backup lights? Neutral safety. We might never know. Guess there's a spade somewhere that uh, doesn't have a terminal on it. Yeah, that uh, trailing arm bushing. She's about ready to give up the ghost. Here's the reason I jacked it up. Oh, we do have jack stands, so nobody scream at me. We're not gonna die. They're not Harbor Freights. They're Craftsmen, which is, they're old Craftsmen though. So before Craftsmen really went to crap. So we're good. And here's that, oh, it's like a drain plug in the block that they hook this heater hose up too for the block heater. So we're gonna have to unhook that quick. Try not to make a mess. And then plug that up there and then plug this in. I don't know, it's not gonna go well. I will set up the camera so you guys can enjoy my struggles. So, I, think we'll just, I don't like those type of clamps. Usually that uh, encapsulated nut right there just spins. So I think we'll just try to hit her with a cutoff wheel and get that out of the way. And then we'll see if we can't get a the right size plug, maybe? I don't know. We'll get a pan ready just in case, try to catch some of that new coolant we put in there. There's just 
grass on freaking everything is viney stuff never seen that around these parts it's better than those uh pack rats that pudding has to deal with gross oh this is not gonna go well let's just let it drain Duff, thanks for helping get that plug in there. I think it's just uh, the block drain from Petcock or whatever. We got that in there, so now we can go up top and uh, place that hose. Should be good to go. Oh, wait, we need to uh, stick a hose on this vacuum modulator. I'll do that quick. All right, we got that behemoth out of there. Now we just got to uh, get the heaters off here. Through that clamp and off up there. Should be easy, right? Right. That 5 ace hose is like the same diameter as that outlet. Guess we're just gonna have to make it. Oh, yeah, you can see. You really had that sucker swelled up to fit. Hmm. That's gonna be fun to get on there. For cheese and rice. Use our battery terminal spreader and maybe open that thing up. Yeah, right. Good luck. There, heater hose replaced. That took way longer than it needed to. So here's an old trick that my grandpa taught me. You take your heater hose, works really good on these older stiff ones, but if you got a hose that's too small and need to go on a bigger fitting, it's not ideal, but you just take a block of wood or your concrete floor or whatever, your bench top and a hammer, doesn't have to be a brass one, and you just work her a bit. Oh, this one's so old and brittle, she's kind of flexing on you. You get the point, just kind of mash on it a bit and it gets nice and pliable and it'll slide right over. That's what I did on that new one. It just kind of stretches it out a bit. The old spill proof funnel actually does a pretty good job. Mortski and Duff approved. I'll try to remember to put a link down below for these things. I think they're like 30 bucks, 40 bucks, something like that. But if you're doing a lot of radiator filling, it seems to be pretty handy. And then I think you got a little plug that you can put in there. Once you get full, you can. Plug it, pull this out, and then dump what's left back into your jug. Pretty neat. I guess I never saw it until I saw it on somebody's YouTube channel. You guys probably never have either. Well, some of you have. A lot of you probably have. Okay, I'm dumb. Did find some belts. I don't have the exact one, but I think we'll make it work. So we just gotta loosen up the alternator, spin her over. Easier said than done. Oh, are you kidding me, AMC? We gotta have two wrenches to do that? Again, belts made of rubber, they break down over time. You lose this belt, you're probably gonna overheat before you run out of battery power, but if you didn't overheat, you're gonna need uh, something to charge your battery. And this one's, I've seen worse, but she's pretty chewy. 15, 430 going on, she fits. I think we need a 15, 425, not a 430. But I don't have that size. Let's see if a 420 will go on. 420. Cheech and Chong things. Hey man. Am I driving okay? I think we're parked, man. Roll her on like your bicycle chain, it should go. Tension her up a bit with our 
snap on screw bar here. It's freaking tight already. You don't even need a tensioner. It's like a kid's toy set. Here's that stopper I was talking about. Put that in there. And then you got all these color coded adapters. This is for thread on caps. This is for those smaller caps. Another smaller version. And then these are just regular adapters for filling up open holes. Pretty uh, neat piece there. EP Auto Spill Proof Funnel Kit. I think I got it on the uh, Amazonia. Good stuff. Unfortunately, I think that's, uh, that's a wrap on this thing. Probably pull that fuel tank off, provided this one's going to keep working. Like I said, I got brake parts on order. I got a carb kit on order. She's going to exhaust. I did pick up some little bit different tires for the front. Still need to find some steelies. I got 115 that was on here. I'm thinking like a 235 or a 245 60 on the front. I got one of each of those. Just need to find some tires or wheels. And then yeah, maybe like paint them gold or something like that. 275 60 on the back. 8 inch rim in the back. I'd like to find like a 7 for the front, but I'm thinking I'm going to find 6s. Pretty common. Keep a lookout for some door handles. I haven't been able to find any. Oh, I did find some outside ones on eBay. No inside ones, but I'm thinking they're the same as four doors. I need to get on that form and type away in there. See what those guys come up with. I guess we could clean the thing out, but that just doesn't sound like any fun. Especially when she's super swampy today after all that rain. Sun's coming out. It's getting gross. Not quite sweating yet. But yeah, once we get some brakes and some exhaust. This thing should be pretty good. So, I mean, we could drive this thing. I just don't feel safe driving it without any brakes. Uh, I know we've done it before, but those cars were manuals. This is an automatic. There's just no way to slow this thing down. And uh, I don't want to hurt anybody else. I don't want to hurt Duff. And I don't want to bang this thing up because she's pretty gosh darn straight. So I think that's a wrap. There you have it. We got a 1967 AMC Rambler back on the road that probably hasn't been run in, what, 40 years? 40 plus so i appreciate it thank you very much for watching check out my other videos um this thing will be back we'll get that stuff done on it might be a short video just doing brakes and going for a ride maybe put some carpet in it door handles i don't know ah i'm really falling in love with this thing but i'll put a link in the description down below for my email at gmail.com Probably will sell this thing. Go check out the merch site. I don't push my merch very much, but I feel like we got some pretty nice t-shirts and stuff in there. I really like the, uh, I don't know what brand of t-shirts that I'm always wearing. I'm not wearing one right now, but check out the t-shirts. I like them. Ball caps, we got some changes coming there. If you need decals, hit me up with an email. Four of them for 10 bucks. Morsecurepair at gmail.com. We can do PayPal or you can snail mail me a check. We'll get those mailed out to you. Thanks for watching. Remember, it doesn't matter you get it done, as long as you're having fun. I feel like Rambler SSTs are going to be a whole lot of fun. I hope that's a posi, and I hope it's got enough power to spin it. Oh, the transmission, if I didn't mention, is a Muncie, oh no, Muncie, Borg Warner M11, and I guess they're uh, pretty weak. So when that grenades, then you find yourself a 727 version. Same with that uh, Dana 20. Probably not a real stout diff, but... 290 is probably not going to break anything, especially with an automatic behind it and a two barrel on top of it. I should put the air cleaner back on this before I forget. Duff, did you take off on me or what? Oh, you're just over napping under the 55. Everybody keeps asking about that stinking 55 and that crew cab Chevy. Well, as you can tell, we're not going to be able to do a wheel it run on that, but we do have some big plans, so stick around. Fitz, you would say. All right, what are we gonna work on next? We gotta get something working or we're gonna lose the shop. They're gonna take our stump away. Let's run this sucker out of here.